Yvonne Burke is a unique first lady. She's used to being a first. Born in Los Angeles, she was the first and only child of James and Lola Watson. She became one of the first two African-American girls admitted to a women's honor society at her high school, Manual Arts. She was the first black woman elected to the California legislature. She became the first black woman elected to the United States Congress from California. She was the first African-American to chair a national convention. She became the first congressperson ever to be granted maternity leave. She became the first woman and first African-American on the Board of Supervisors of the County of Los Angeles when she was appointed by Governor Jerry Brown. She became the first African-American elected to the Board of Supervisors. Then she became the first African-American chairperson of the board. And actually, that's not all the firsts Yvonne Burke has been. There are numerous other ones. What does she think about being a lady of all these firsts? It's always exciting to take on new, uncharted ground. And I've been very fortunate that I've been able to have experiences that maybe no other African-American woman had previously. And I was able to make it possible for young women to know that they can do it. How did she do it? She became interested in student politics in junior high school. In high school, at Manual Arts, she was elected student body president. She also led an active social life and at the same time managed to win numerous scholarships for college, including the first scholarship awarded by the Service Employees International Union. She started off at the University of California, Berkeley, then transferred to UCLA. In college, she worked at numerous jobs, using the skills she had learned at manual arts to supplement her income. It was tough, but she had a way of overcoming adversity. She even managed to turn a serious illness one busy Christmas season into something positive. I was down with pneumonia for a few weeks, and I lost a lot of weight. I lost so much weight that I was walking across the campus at UCLA, and I was approached by a photographer and asked me if I'd like to be a fashion model. And I was able to become a model, modeling fashions and clothes, photography, and I did that to make extra money for two years, the last two years of my college. She graduated from USC Law School. But despite her high marks and passing the California State Bar on her first attempt, no major law firm would hire her. So she went into private practice. I did go into a very small office by myself. I did anything that would walk in the door, but I was able to get enough experience that when an application was available to be deputy corporation commissioner, I took that exam and was able to really get a great opportunity through a distinguished man, John Sobieski, who was willing to give a chance to an African-American woman to become a deputy corporation commissioner. She also continued to be involved in community affairs. She was working as a hearing officer at the Los Angeles Police Commission when the Watts riots exploded in 1965. I was part of a group of people who organized legal assistance to those people who were arrested. And I would go into the jail to try to get them released, hopefully without any bail, and in order for them to be able to get back to their jobs. And this whole practice of moving forward and providing legal representation to those who were arrested, and there were thousands of them, as a result of the riots, caught the attention of those people who were putting together the legal staff for the McCone Commission. She was offered a position with the commission, which was investigating the underlying causes of the riots. This opened the door to her political career. Someone said to me, well, you know, it's so difficult. What we've seen happen is that none of the elected officials could even go into the riot zone. We need to have young African-Americans who run for office. And of course, when they started looking around, who was it that they decided should run? It was me. When I was elected as the first African-American woman to go to the legislature, it was a big shock to the legislature. They didn't even know whether I would be able to use the bathroom with the other two women who were there. Uh, there was a question of who was going to sit next to me. But somehow, I was able to go there, 
I got good committee assignments. I was able to be successful in terms of getting legislation through and to serve my constituents. She co-authored legislation to aid indigent children, residents of nursing and convalescent homes, and victims of eminent domain. Then she decided to run for a new congressional seat created after the 1970 census. Shortly after winning her congressional seat, she became vice chair of the 1972 Democratic National Convention in Miami Beach, where she presided over the most contentious session in convention history. This put her in the limelight, and she became a force in the party, served on some important congressional committees, and chaired the Congressional Black Caucus. She sponsored legislation benefiting displaced homemakers. Her Burke Amendment to the Comprehensive Employment and Training Act also committed federal oil pipeline funds to an affirmative action program and resulted in $312 million in contracts to women and minority-owned businesses. She became the first congressional member ever to be granted maternity leave when her daughter Autumn was born in 1974. By then, Yvonne Burke had accomplished many of the goals she had set for herself years before, including a family. It's amazing being married to someone who has done as much as Yvonne has. Probably the most unbelievable incident in our life was when Autumn was about 12. She came running out the back door of the house and Yvonne and I were sitting in the backyard. And she was screaming, she said, Mommy, Mommy, look at this. Your picture's in my history book. Her husband is businessman and Los Angeles Marathon Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Bill Burke. And her family includes stepdaughter Christine Burke, as well as daughter Autumn. As Autumn approached school age, Yvonne Burke decided it was time to move back to California. She decided to run for state attorney general. She lost, despite endorsements from Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley and numerous other officials. But once again, Yvonne Burke mined gold from adversity. I had a wonderful experience serving as chair of the Federal Reserve for the Los Angeles branch of the Federal Reserve. Learning about economics and learning about our Federal Reserve system, working with uh, Greenspan, with all of the people. Fortunately, I was appointed by him the second time. I was appointed the first time by Volcker. She also served on the Board of Regents of the University of California and became a partner in two major law firms. And there was more. She was also on the Board of Advisors for Nestle Corporation, which has 320 thousand employees worldwide and uh, she also served on all kind of educational testing services. In 1979 Governor Jerry Brown appointed Yvonne Burke to the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors to fill the seat of Supervisor James Hayes who had resigned. She became the first African American to sit on the board. However, despite a hard-fought campaign she lost the supervisor's seat in 1980 to Dean Dana. She went back to her corporate law practice. She also became vice chair of the 1984 U.S. Olympics Organizing Committee for the games that were held in Los Angeles. In 1992, Los Angeles County Supervisor Kenneth Hahn's seat became available when he decided to retire. After a bruising campaign in which Hahn endorsed her, Yvonne Burke won the seat. In 1993, she was voted the first African-American chair of the board by her fellow supervisors. Once again, she set to work to serve her constituents. I feel most proud in being able to call attention to people to the fact that we need to address the issues of environment in our community in the second district. When we were able to start what has become the Baldwin Hills Park by starting to acquire land and able to establish a little league field and a soccer field and hopefully very soon we'll have a driving range for people in that whole West Los Angeles Ladera area. Those things are things that will be utilized and benefit people in the future. But there remains more to do. Obviously King Drew Hospital is a great challenge to me and I'll be doing everything that I can to make sure that that hospital is stabilized, that the trauma unit is back in operations and that the people there 
have every kind of medical service and high quality service that the community deserves. It's a challenge in terms of foster children. It's a challenge in terms of gang violence in this district. It's not an easy district, but it's a district made up of the most diverse, probably in the United States, where people, though, work together, get along well, and it's a very exciting opportunity. And I'm looking forward to these final four years of service to the people of Los Angeles. I think anybody who believes this is Yvonne's last term leaves in the tooth fairy. I have told her 25 times, I believe she's going to be the Strom Thurmond of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors. But although Yvonne Burke was well acquainted with Strom Thurmond in the past, she does not see him in her future. I know one thing, I don't intend to run for supervisor again or for any other elected office. It's ingrained in her personality to want to help people. So when that lasts, whenever she leaves the Board of Supervisors, I believe until she draws her last breath, she'll be helping people.